Hi, I'm Don. I'm Kathleen. In this video, we're going to give you the very best and the worst of that ship right there. The MSC Maravilla. Before we share what we loved or hated about the Maravilla, allow me to qualify what I will be saying. We don't use social media to air our grievances or complain about everything that wasn't just perfect. We love cruising. We also don't give in to the temptation to be negative just because negative videos get more views. There is no such thing as a perfect cruise nor is there a perfect ship or a perfect cruise line. And if you step away from nitpicking the imperfections, cruising is a wonderful thing to experience for most people. In fact, CLIA, that's the Cruise Line Industry Association, reports that of those who will take their first cruise, more than 80% will cruise again. Cruising is a tremendous vacation value. We made a video tour of the Maravilla in April of 2022, so we won't repeat everything we said there. Here is a little info to frame our thoughts, however. The Maravilla was built in 2017 and was last dry docked in April of 2022. That makes her newer than many of the ships based in the United States. She is 167,600 gross registered tons, which makes her a little larger than the majority of cruise ships, but still much smaller than the Royal Caribbean Oasis class ships that weigh in at more than 225,000 gross registered tons. The Maravilla can carry more than 5,000 passengers, though the passenger count on our last cruise was around 2,000. As far as features go, the Maravilla has four outdoor pools, ten hot tubs, a bowling alley, a Formula One simulator, a water park, an arcade, a casino, a Broadway-style theater, as well as a lounge theater. There's a fitness center and a spa. And I'll talk about dining venues in just a moment. So, accepting the possibility that what we share next is very subjective, here is what we loved and hated about the MSC Maravilla. Let's begin with the positive. Our first impression of the Maravilla was and is that she is a stunning Italian beauty. Surprisingly, the other passengers we surveyed barely noticed that. We certainly did. The ship was fresh from dry dock. It's stylish and unique. I'll let the images do the convincing. The second thing we loved was the crew. They were always very friendly, engaging, and eager to serve. Our cabin steward kept our place spotless and jumped on our every request. Other crew members constantly cleaned the common areas and the wait staff in the restaurants always went the extra mile, even when things out of our sight might have been stressful. The third thing we love about the Maravilla and MSC cruises in general is their great value. I think that's why there were so many Royal Caribbean devotees on our particular cruise. Here are some of our observations and examples. When bundled, you pay much less for your stateroom with a drink package and Wi-Fi than you will on other popular cruise lines. 
At the time of our cruise, here's another one, single cruisers could book a cabin without the usual single supplement upcharge. That's quite a savings for passengers traveling solo. By the way, there are also 48 special needs cabins on the Maravilla. Okay, let me attempt to make an apples-to-apples -apples cost comparison with a similar Royal Caribbean cruise. I'll get them as close as possible to be fair. Here we go. A seven-night balcony cruise aboard Oasis of the Seas to the Caribbean from Miami will cost $2,137, including taxes and port fees, but no drinks or Wi-Fi. The MSC Seascape, which is, by the way, a brand new ship, similar cabin on December 11th, Caribbean cruise, seven days for two people, will cost just $1,407. With drinks and Wi-Fi, the MSC cruise is still only $1,707, while the Royal Caribbean cruise soars another $1,000. This is how, I think, MSC is winning over Royal Caribbean loyalists. Of course, don't hold me to those prices. Promotions are constantly changing and a perfect comparison is impossible. So talk to your travel agent about it. So there are three good reasons to try MSC Maravilla. Beautiful ship, awesome crew, and very competitive pricing. Finally, we come to the things that really missed the mark on our MSC Maravilla cruise, and we'll mention two broad areas here. First is what seems to be a systemic problem with MSC management or communications or operations. I, I'm not really sure. The most glaring example was our prolonged boarding time. It took over three hours to board the Maravilla. The crews before ours had complaints of boarding times over five hours. There was no official communication regarding the delays on our cruise. We did talk to a few who, when they complained at customer service, received a free bottle of champagne. Whatever the reason, these are the kind of inconveniences that will drive away future cruisers. In all fairness, however, I have read Facebook posts that the cruise after hours did not experience long boarding times. I have also read that the cruise after hours only had 1,300 passengers. Lesser examples of poor administration would include a, a clumsy app, inaccurate schedules, and poor communications. For example, after ordering but not receiving room service two days in a row, we made the trek to customer service who rectified the communication problem. Yes, these things are minor, but when there are a number of them piling up, the red flags go up, signaling a deeper problem. Our final complaint is not something that happened, but rather what was missing. A first-time cruiser might not know what they were missing, but experienced cruisers could easily see it. Here it is. The Maravilla has only two dining venues that are included in your fare, the buffet and the main dining rooms. There are multiple main dining rooms, but you are assigned to one, and the menus are all the same. The buffet is very large, but the menus don't change much. They do make fresh mozzarella cheese right in the buffet, but the pizza, which is very good, is the same day in and day out. There is a small buffet line serving hamburgers, hot dog, and pizza uh, near the main pool, but it is really just an extension of the buffet. There were no places to get a non-alcoholic drink or cup of coffee other than the buffet on deck 15 or the main dining rooms on decks 5 and 6. Yes, there is a premium handmade chocolate shop with coffee and a gelato stand available for an upcharge but no free soft-serve ice cream machine is to be found on the ship. There are four other dining venues which are very good, but they come with an upcharge. Surprisingly, there is no Italian restaurant on this Italian ship. Now, contrast that with a newer carnival ship, say the Mardi Gras, where the main dining room and buffet are included in your fare, 
but so is Guy's Burgers, Blue Iguana Cantina, Street Eats, Cucina del Cappuccino, which is the Italian restaurant, a pizzeria, a panini deli, Shebangs, which is a mix of uh, Asian and Mexican, and of course, Pig and Anchor Smokehouse. Not to mention craft beers made right on board and unlimited self-serve ice cream. Carnival has figured out something MSC has not. Passengers want lots of dining options included in the fare. In my limited survey of fellow passengers, it seems dining options and good entertainment are the most important things to senior cruisers. The entertainment, by the way, was very good. Now, if we want to contrast with Royal Caribbean ships, while the Maravilla does have a small water park, ropes course, and a nice arcade, it is missing a rock climbing wall, zip line, surfing simulator, sky pag, laser tag, skydiving simulator, a North Star, breakout room, ice skating rink, you, know, you get the picture. So, in conclusion, would we cruise MSC again? Yes, of course, especially when the prices are so much lower and the ships are so beautiful. And if you're not going to use those extra amenities, why pay for them? The positives outweigh the negatives. We do wish, however, that MSC would add some dining options that are included in the cruise fare, especially on the promenade. That's it. Thanks for watching. Our cruise line. See you next time.